along a Monday. It's a groovy <laughs> Monday because I'm sharing my May haul with you all today. Love a good haul video. Love just talking about the different manga that I'm into or that I just started checking out. And I got a good pile of volume ones thanks to my birthday and my lovely friends and family who gifted me a bunch of lovely manga. I will try to give a shout out when it is a present that someone has given me for certain manga. Well, I might forget, so I'm really sorry. And I just want to say I appreciate and thank you so, so, so much. And yeah, so let's begin with the one that is not a manga. I always have to toss in, you know, one random category. <laughs> so I was innocently just scrolling on Amazon, definitely not looking to buy anything or, you know, what have you. But all of a sudden I came across a cover that looked very familiar and yet completely new to me. Uh, it looked familiar because the cover is very similar to the other three books that I have from the series. And lo and behold, a new Foxhole Court volume came out called The Sunshine Court. And this is just, it's, <laughs> it's a series I don't really like, recommend per se, yet I love it so fiercely. This is a series that somebody posted about on Instagram and I thought looked really interesting so I picked it up and oh my god I read all three of the other volumes in one day. <laughs> I just sat there and I kept reading and I stayed up way too late. I probably had work the next day because I always do when I make that choice to just stay up until I can finish a book but anyway it's just it's really good but it's also really toxic there's a lot of trigger warnings like it's angsty it's about this made up sport and it's a boy's love story essentially but that's not like the whole like what the series is about but there is that in it but there's also like a lot of other like characters and stuff going on and like let me tell you, like, even though I love that part, it's like a very small part of the series. And I'm really, really curious to see what else will be revealed and written about in this new volume. I'm so, I like, I did not, I totally missed it. So sad. But um, yeah, now I got it. And now I have an excuse to reread the series again. <laughs> now, without further ado, we shall enter the manga portion of this whole video. I swear, I only got one novel. So I'm thinking... I'm gonna start with the continuing series because I got a lot of them as well. I got some pre-orders in. We'll start with the Faraway Paladin Omnibus 5. It has been so long since I read one through four. For my friends actually, they got me the first two, I wanna say. I don't know, but I ate it up. It's an isekai, but it's, it's much more just a, a fantasy series at its core really and yeah I'm really excited for volume 5 I haven't read it yet to be honest with you but um I love this cover and I'm excited for some more adventure and fantasy next up I got volume 2 of smoking behind the supermarket with you Ugh, I absolutely loved volume 1 I just I love a like slice of life kind of romantic undertones of like teasing and like getting closer. It's just so cute. It's just an overworked salary man and a kind of a mischievous cashier who starts smoking behind the supermarket and start bonding. And yeah, I just, I love it. It's like a comfort read for me. It's like not a lot's going on, but it's cozy, comforting and cute. So yeah, I love volume two. Then I finally got some newer releases from April that I totally missed coming out in April because I'm just, I'm not on top of it. I got A Tale of the Secret Saint volume five. I just talked about how much I love this reincarnated fantasy series. So if you want to hear my thoughts on it, go check out this video right here where I talk about my favorite, my top five reincarnated slash shoujo se isekai type manga. So yeah, so good. 
Next up, I got Welcome to Demon School, Aruma Kun, Volume 7. This cover is just so great. I love all the covers. I love, I love this series so much. It is like just nostalgic childhood shonen vibes and yeah, I'm just digging it. It's just, it's usually like very comedy heavy, a little action, um, and obviously a great fantasy world setting. So I absolutely love it. And I feel so bad that I forgot to order the next volume. I gotta stay on top of this series. Then comes a whole bunch of manga that my lovely parents got me. I mostly just got manga this year. I just wanted to go on a little shopping spree and that's what I got to do and it was super fun. But uh, yeah, I got volume three and volume four of I'm in Love with the Villainous. This is another fun isekai for me where the girl gets sucked into her favorite Atomi game, but she played the game not because of the hottie guys, but because of the super cute villainous. And she has a super adorable crush on her. And yeah, it's just really cute. It's a Yuri type shoujo say reincarnated isekai story, so. I'm really enjoying it. But yeah, volume four was half off. And so I bought volume three, which I needed because I only had volume one, two. And then I got this one for half off, which was super sweet deal. <laughs> well, okay, my parents bought them for me for, but I saved them some money <laughs> by getting the deal. <laughs> I'm taking the credit, but not spending the dough. <laughs> next, next up, another isekai type villainous series that is one of the oldest ones I've been collecting and I did not know I did not know that volume 9 came out but here it is my next life as a villainous all roots lead all roots lead to doom this is like my gateway drug <laughs> this is the manga that started me in the downward spiral of being all consumed by isekai and villainous and reincarnated type manga so yeah this is <laughs> all roots definitely led to my doom <laughs> but i did not even realize that the ninth volume the newest volume came out i just saw it at the manga store when i was doing my shopping spree and i was like oh hell yeah gotta pick it up look at how cute the backs are they always are so cute i just had to share so adorable and then I grabbed the next volume of Malevolent Spirits, Mononogatari, volume six. We're already up to six. We are flying through some of these series. <laughs> and that's why it's like becoming hard for me to remember what's coming out and keep track of it all. And yeah. But anyway, another fun, action packed fantasy type story that I'm really enjoying as well. And another fantasy, though, more slice of life fantasy, we got volume four of Call the Name of the Night. So beautiful artwork and a, a dark tinge to a otherwise kind of slice of life fantasy story series. I heard it was complete at five volumes, so I'm very intrigued to, you know, see if that is the case, first of all, because sometimes I get fake news, okay? I get, I get fake news. I get told things or I read things online and it's not true, but I am very curious. I love a good short series, so hopefully this is a good one. Yeah, <laughs> so far I'm liking it a lot. Then I got volume three of Pass the Monster Meet Milady, since we're continuing on the um, fantasy train. <laughs> this is more of a romance comedy fantasy slice of life story, <laughs> so... So no matter what kind of fantasy, I got them all. <laughs> and next up, again, one that I didn't realize was out until I saw it in the store. We got the new ZOM 100 Bucket List of the Dead volume, volume 14. And just look at this gorgeous, like, colorful, fun cover. I love ZOM 100 covers. They're so nice. <laughs> so nice so yeah if you don't know this series it is an exciting zombie survival type story except for it's more just comedic hijinks set in a zombie apocalypse so it's way lighter and more comedy heavy but yeah it's fun time it's a fun raid and i love it dearly so yay <laughs> 
another series I absolutely love. We have Shikamori's and Not Just a Cutie Volume 16. Ugh, this is just like the softest romance slice of life series that I did not think I would like because it, it starts with them already in a relationship, our main couple, and it's just very much about their day-to-day -day school life and their relationship and how they're growing closer and, you know, sprinkling a little drama, but really never like that intensive drama. So like, it's just so soft and cozy and I don't know, I love it. It's adorable. Highly recommend. And another one that's super soft and cozy and a comfort read for me is Insomniacs After School Volume 5. This one had been out for a while. I just finally got to picking it up. I'm a little behind on the series, I'm not gonna lie. But I seriously love this one. Another kind of slice of life story about two high schoolers who form an astrology club and create this bond just because they are both insomniacs and struggle sleeping for different reasons. And I also got Minato's Laundromat Volume 2. This is an age gap BL. It won't be for everybody, but it's super soft and super sweet as well. So it fits, it fits in with the other one. I'm categorizing the categories now. I'm sure it won't last. I'm not that good. But we'll move right along to more romance and romance comedy with the latest volume of Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro, volume 16. Oh my god. We're in the, in the high teens now. But yeah, this is another just mm, super cute, a little bit spicy, a little bit I mean, not fully, but like there was a moment, there was a moment in an onsen and I won't go into details, but I just love their relationship. They're becoming so cute. Ugh, I can't stand it. Yeah, so now it's just a fun, funny little rom-com. Another series with some rom-com energy and cute vibes we have. I'm a wolf, but my boss is a sheep, volume four. I just love the, the anthropomorphic, whatchamacallit, human animal mix. <laughs> I'm not a furry. <laughs> I just think it's adorable. Look at how adorable these boys are. Oh my God, I felt so hard for him in this volume. I was like, <sighs> I also found an interesting error. <laughs> I'm just gonna share it because I thought it was really interesting. So they put all their birthdays here and then we have him, which I like said I fell in love with him. And I was like really curious what his birthday is. So they have it listed as 5-4, which would be May 4th and an Aries. No, that is incorrect. If his birthday is in fact May 4th, it would be he's a Taurus like me, which, oh my God, we totally could share birthdays. Well, birthday astrological signs anyway, but it could be that Japan um, and a lot of countries, honestly, we're the weird ones, I think, that flip the months and the days. So it could be April 5th. And in that case, he might be an Aries. So I don't know whether the Aries part is right or the birth date is right and you know which one but it was an interesting error so <laughs> i had canon that he is a taurus because i just i totally i totally feel our taurus energies <laughs> sorry i'm becoming an astrological girly for a moment there i don't even care that much and yeah last couple we got love is in sight another little rom-com we're already up to volume six. I did look it up online and it says it's complete at, I believe it was eight volumes. So it's very near complete, which I think is a good length for me anyway. I like short, short and sweet. It's about a girl with a visual impairment and she is blind and the not delinquent, delinquent guy that she meets with this scary tough face and uh, that they get closer. And it's just really cute and funny and sweet and yeah. Then we have The Holy Grail of Eris, Volume 7. Oh, I love this story so much. I just, I need to know. I need to know what happened. It's just full of mystery and 
uh, so much backstabbery and like political drama it's just it's got it's got all these highfalutin high class people up to no good they're up to no good like a bridgerton but with a murder mystery in the center you know what i'm saying like with take out this spot and replace it with a murder mystery yeah it was like that victorian vibes and stuff i don't know that makes sense but yeah i really love it so <laughs> i think more people should read it and then we have the <laughs> latest thinnest little volume of chair moon empire volume four. Oh my god look at her she is emaciated uh, like like she is too thin this is what are you giving me j novel j novel heart whatever <laughs> i don't even know who makes these it's okay it's just so great to have some more of the hilarious protagonist that is princess mia and again i talked about this one in my top five shoujo say reincarnated isekai type series so yeah but i love it but i hate it what the frick is that and lastly we have a one webtoon in my continuing series see you in my 19th life volume two I gushed about this in just last week's Monday video, which is a tier list ranking of all 14 first volume webtoons that I experienced lately. So yeah, and this was one of my favorites. And so I absolutely had to get volume two when I saw it in the store. Yee! I already read it, it's so good. I can't wait for volume three. All right, now we shall move on to the first volumes that I picked up this past month. I really should say more that I was gifted this past month. I think every single one of them but one was a gift. And I sincerely am so grateful for being, for the, being gifted most of these because I otherwise would not have been able to buy them all. So let's just get the one and only first volume that I personally bought myself. And that is... Tales of the Tendo Family. So I actually read this one to a degree online. So I already knew when I saw it, I was like, oh, I like this one. Um, do I, can I recommend it to people though? <sighs> she talks sick. Well, actually he talks sick. <laughs> He's toxic as hell. Very likable protagonist. He's been through so much sadness and then she gets intertwined kind of by happenstance with this very odd very powerful family <laughs> and it's kind of giving my happy marriage if all the bad rumors about him were actually true you know like he's actually a, a gem a sweetheart in my happy marriage this case no no all the rumors about how crappy and scary and cuckoo bananas this family is uh they are true and he is not a great person in the beginning so if you do not like toxic starts to relationships if you do not like when the guy is he's pretty much a downright asshole like i'm not gonna sugarcoat it that being said i really like it i do um so if you don't mind some toxicity <laughs> it's beautiful art i'd say pick it up at your own discretion <laughs> all right next up we have a whole bunch of first volumes that one of my lovely friends gifted me for my birthday and I have like an Amazon wish list that he picks off of and it's super fun. And I do the same for him for his birthday. But yeah, so he gave me some that he had and he didn't want to continue to. So yeah, but anyway, first up was my favorite of the bunch. I want a gal gamer to praise me. Oh my God, like, I don't know why. I just, I saw this girl and she looked like just the cutest little thing. Um, 
a little bit sexualized but the pink hair and just her like vibe is just like that dorky cute and i love me a dorky cute girl like i can't help it she's so cute and yeah so this guy wants to be a better gamer in this particular game sorry i am not a gamer so that part like i don't think you need to be a gamer to read to really enjoy the series or anything but i'm sure it doesn't hurt because they do talk about gaming and stuff in it um and bond over it and stuff which is cute but like yeah so he wants to be a gamer rise up in the ranks of this one game um and apparently it's like a direct like reference to an actual game um yeah yeah i was told that i don't know that <laughs> i was told that by my friend that gifted me this so yeah but anyway i just saw this cover i said it looks adorable but i don't know if i'll love it but i did really enjoy it i will say i was a little disappointed by the addition of another girl towards the end i don't really love those like love triangle things but i'm gonna hold my judgments because i think our main girl here rion is just too cute so yeah next up he gifted me phantom of the idol volume one this one was on my wish list for a while i wasn't sure ones that are way more comedy heavy are sometimes hard for me to bite the bullet because comedy is subjective and sometimes it just doesn't vibe for me. I thought this was a really cute start to a series though. I just think that like Yuya is lazy to the max but I appreciate a lazy king. Like I, I appreciate the fact that he sees this ghost idol girl, realizes she can enter his body and do the like work for him and he's just like yeah let's let's pair up. You want to be an idol still even though you did. I want to make money without any effort <laughs> he's a lazy king and uh yeah he, i think he's funny and i think their dynamic's really cute so far i'm interested to see how it will progress you know she's she's a whole ass ghost you know so i can't see any romance happening <laughs> but yeah we'll see what happens i also think i'll continue this one because it's just really cute then he gave me chained soldier volume one so i was afraid this one was like an action harem type story which kind of kind of vibing like it is like not gonna lie it's kind of vibing like it is like he this one male guy is now in a house with a bunch of different girls <sighs> i don't know I don't know about this one. I gotta say, the girls are strong. They're badass. I do love me some badass female protagonists. I, their relationship with him though is super sus. I liked it. Like I had fun with it, but will I continue it? I'm on the fence with it. I'm on the fence with it. <laughs> then you got me, Ghost Reaper Girl, volume one, which is the same mangaka as Rosario and Vampire. I'm pointing because it's like, it's over there, but you can't see it. So I don't know why I did it. But anyway, I did not even realize that when I put it on my wish list eons ago, but uh, I'm really excited and I really, really liked it. Like um, she is just a normal girl who I guess has some spiritual affinity. And when there is a spirit kind of break out of hell, all these spirits come to earth and they're trying to get her and so this guy who you know isn't like a guy he's um you know like um kind of like a prison guard from hell <laughs> he's trying to round up all these like loose spirits in the human world now and he realizes that they have a affinity and like using her body will like boost his powers and in the end i really like that it looks like she can do this kind of mashup with these spirit people not just with him so there's like more cool combinations i think with like i don't know it just it gave me like magical transformation like sailor moon vibes you know the magical girl vibes um but like with 
ghosts and and creepy stuff i guess <laughs> but like i don't know it was fun it was a fun time so i definitely think i will continue this one and next up is one i didn't read <laughs> 15 minutes before we really date volume one so this was one he read and then un uh, didn't wasn't going to continue so he asked if i was interested and i am interested i do want to try and tackle it it is written in this very like short chapter like kind of like shikamori is not just a cutie i'm not gonna lie it's like that's kind of the the way shikamori is like especially in the beginning like each chapter is very just like short little interaction about them and stuff so yeah i did start it i got to like here you know like not very far i'm saying um and I, I just wasn't like mm, wasn't feeling it but it could just be my mood so i'm like waiting on it when i want something like soft and cozy i'm gonna hopefully pick it up and try again and like it more maybe i don't know we'll see always hope but i really just like loved the cover and the artwork and that was why i was always kind of interested in it but not like sure about it at the same time either it was going to be a sleeper hit for me like shikamori or it was just gonna be a nope for me so it was really nice of him to give me a chance and check it out after he checked it out and then he also um got this first volume of jungle juice and didn't feel like he was gonna keep going with it so he sent it to me to see if I would like to keep going with it. And I don't think I will keep going with it. I also talk about this webtoon. It was one of my first volumes I read in my tier list from last Monday's video. Like there's there's nothing bad about it. It just kind of like just wasn't, I wasn't connecting with it. And even though it left on the majorest of cliffhangers <laughs> and the art's really nice, but like, yeah, just, was environment with it you know then the rest of the first volume are ones that my lovely parents let me pick out in my shopping spree i got this one voice over seiyu academy volume one um it's an older shoujo series it was on the half price books um and i've been really curious about it because it is by the same mangaka as kamomo Kamomo Confessari, which is one of my favorite shoujo's, just short and sweet and rom-com adorableness. And it's also the mangaka of SA or Special Academy, uh, which is another cute one. I watched the anime of that one. I still need one volume to complete the set. It's been out of stock for forever, but um, so I haven't read it yet. But anyway, so two series that I really liked. Yeah, I was really curious about this one. So. Hopefully I can read volume one soon and see if it is going to be one for me. It is complete at 12 volumes, I believe when I looked it up. So not too bad if I do want to get into it. Next up and the last one that I grabbed off the used half off sale area in my manga store was I Can't Say No to the Lonely Girl volume one. So this is a Yuri. And I have to say, it was adorable. I loved it so much. Um, so this girl, Ayaka, which who I thought was gonna be the lonely girl. It's not her. Um, so Ayaka is the model student. However, her teacher basically bribes her into checking on the truant student, Sora here who, and trying to get her to attend school again. Um, you know, it starts off like you think, oh, this is gonna be like a big angsty, like dramatic thing when she finds out that she only started to get close to her because no, it's just, it's easily resolved in like the first chapter by Sora kind of blackmailing her back in a way. She's like, I don't care that you did this for the teacher but if you want me to keep coming to school and try and get good grades and stuff then you'll let me do one favor a day and the first favor is a kiss uh it's really just cute i i mean i know it's like a little bit non-consensual i guess because she's slightly like you know but i think it was really really cute and i really enjoyed the um yuri rom-com vibes from this one so yeah Moving on, there have been a few 
villainous type stories that have come out in the past couple months that I hadn't grabbed and so I treated myself. <laughs> First up, I got The Villainous's Guide to Not Falling in Love. Um, I'm gonna say they're all really cute. I'm all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue all of them. Nothing was super different or anything than the typical villainous type, shoujo say type, isekai slash reincarnated type stories. <sighs> But I really did enjoy them. They're just fun. They're just like, they're they're just turn off your brain and enjoy type stories. And yeah, so this is one where the girl has been reincarnated into a villainous, pretty straightforward type story. And it also takes place in a magical world. So there's magic and she finally unlocks her magic potential and you know, has gets the uh, guy's attention. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> but yeah, just um straightforward villainous type story it is very cute. They fell down. <laughs> Next up I grabbed The Condemned Villainous Goes Back in Time and Aims to Become the Ultimate Villain, Volume 1. <laughs> Mouthful of a title. I absolutely love this cover art. Very appealing. So in her original timeline, she was betrayed by her younger stepsister and sold off to a brothel and um, watched a dear friend die and was miserable, okay? So then she dies and lo and behold, she goes back in time to a point in her past that she has already lived and wakes up in her, you know, more childhood body. Anyway, again, another straightforward <laughs> type story but I really do love them I'm there's nothing much to add it's just I, it was an enjoyable time for me but yeah it's, it's, yeah more of the same <laughs> but I like it <laughs> and lastly I got god damn I hate this I hate this title so much <laughs> if the villainess and villain met and fell in love she was all but disowned for her spirit contract but she's still competing with her rival so yeah, she does not have a strong magical ability, which is why her engagement got um, dissolved. And so now she's in the school being looked at as a total loser, but she's decided to just pour her all into studying and competing with Yuri here, who is really smart and always like the head of his class and really strong magical abilities and stuff. And they form a cute little relationship. It was cute. It was, it's, it's um, you know, they're both pariahs essentially. He's very cold and doesn't have a lot of friends and, um, which he doesn't care about. But anyway, they form a bond. It's really cute. It's nothing like being reincarnated or anything isekai-ish. I think it's just a fantasy villainous type story but yeah she's not really a villainous like leave her alone <laughs> she's she's just a she's just a girl okay but anyway still just another cute one I really enjoyed it next up was one I was eyeing for the cover art it was definitely a cover buy though anything to do with books is also something I'm just drawn to and uh yeah so I finally picked up whoever steals this book volume one and I gotta say I haven't been disappointed in a manga so badly in a while as I was in this volume. And I don't know why it seemed like it was up my alley. Her just complete unwillingness and dislove of books and, and she just made for an unlikable protagonist to me, I guess. And uh, the situation, she's just like, it just seems like it's very repetitive. Like somebody steals a book there's a curse on the town, everything goes weird, and she's the only one, and this like magical familiar girl, which I didn't think she was gonna be magical, I thought she was just gonna be, I guess, I don't know if it, it says, it just says with the help of mis the mysterious Mashiro. Anyway, so Mashiro is not just like a regular girl from her school like I thought she was. I thought it was gonna be kind of like a Yuri vibe and my share was gonna but I don't know it's not that's not what I'm getting and I just didn't like it which is really disappointing because I haven't like disliked a manga in quite a while but uh yeah I'm curious if anybody's read this how you liked it or 
didn't like it. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's disappointing. I think since Glitch. Yeah, Glitch really disappointed me because I thought this is going to be really interesting and cool. And I just didn't vibe with it. Yeah, I just couldn't get into the story. But uh, yeah, it's always a bummer when that happens. But super beautiful cover though. Next up was an immediate buy for me because it's a premise of adult in a relationship I hope I don't know I I always love me an adult relationship instead of we're in high school so, and that is Friday at the Atelier so this is about a pretty typical female office worker and she just happens to bump into this somewhat actually famous renowned artist and he is inspired by her he's like oh like could you actually like come to my apartment and be my nude model <laughs> and she just says yeah <laughs> she's kind of an airhead like she's she kind of just goes along with whatever um I found her like simultaneously like a little bit annoying but like also endearing in some way I, I Maybe it's like looking in the mirror sometimes. <laughs> she just kind of reminded me of me. Like, all right, I'll just go along with this. Seems random, but sure. <laughs> it's not a great idea, girls. Don't just follow a random dude to their apartment to be a nude model. It sounds awful. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> but I know like situationally, I can kind of understand why she did it, but it, it comes off as very, very dumb. Very dumb decision. Do not recommend, <laughs> but yeah. I thought the first volume was pretty, pretty good, pretty solid. Um, I wasn't like blown away by it, but I definitely would love to see more. And he's definitely like the falling first type trope. Um, he's already pretty interested in her and she's just kind of oblivious. Cause yeah, that's what she does. But uh, yeah, it's cute. It's it, it was a cute first volume. Next up though is a high school romance. And it was one of my favorite reads. You and I are polar opposites. Just another rom-com, just cute vibe. It's like, I, like they are very different personalities, but she has a crush on him and is kind of afraid for people to find out. Um, but then she's like, I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck. And so they start dating. It's just really cute. And like, I, I don't know, like it's just, it's simple, like it's stupidly simple, but I just thought they were the sweetest little couple and that their like interactions were so fun to read. So yeah, nothing crazy, but uh, I definitely was a fan and will be continuing this one. So yeah, just rom-com adorableness strikes again. <laughs> and my other absolute favorite first volume, KX Yaku, Bound by Law. So this is a BO. And as soon as I read a detective going undercover and uh, to infiltrate uh, this mafia guy's uh, operation. And yeah, it's, it's, it's everything I love in a BL and more. And since my poll that I put up, which if you haven't gone over to my community page, there is a poll going on right now to vote for an upcoming video, probably next Monday's video, to be honest. And uh, right now, recent BL that I've read is winning. So I'm not gonna talk about this one yet because I might be talking about it very, very soon. <laughs> Last up is Another BL, Engage. It's by Yu Minaduki, which is the um, mangaka of Love Nest and Sayonara Game. Um, so I read a lot of their work and this is like their newest release, at least here anyway. Um, so I'm really excited. I heard mixed reviews. Some people are like turned off by it. Some people are liking it, so. Also, let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to find out which side of the road I will land on. I usually like their work and their characters and everything. So I have high hopes for this one, but I think I'm going to be saving it to read for a future video. So stay tuned on that one as well. <sighs> Second to last categories. I'm going to go through these really quick because I, I just take so much time. I talk too much. I'm so sorry. Next category we have is 
one shots. I have a couple one shots I got. The first one my friend also gave to me because he wasn't super into it and wasn't hauling it. And that's the last one he gave me and it is Mushroom Girls in Love. So this is like a cute little one shot Yuri. Um, it sounded like it's just, it doesn't feel very complete and stuff, which I always hate that because yeah, that's how I felt about Scarlet and a couple others that they just don't get the time to like flesh out the world building and stuff and so it feels rushed and whatever but I'm curious to see how I think sometimes it doesn't bother me because it's like oh it's just like a peek into their lives and like maybe it'll be really cute and stuff but again I haven't read it yet I think I'm going to be saving it for a video as well so yeah hopefully to talk about it soon these last three I have read and they are all BL. So first up we have Nagahama, To Be or Not To Be. This is by Scarlett Barrico, who's done a lot, a lot, a lot of manga in BL. And this one shot was honestly really, really cute. It was a uh, like childhood friends to lovers trope, which I'm always a sucker for a good childhood friends to lovers. Um, and I thought that the boys were just really cute. Simple story, but um, pretty effective for me. I enjoyed it. And another one that was simple and cute and effective was Number Call. So this one was really sweet about two classmates who both have a name people call them that resonates with the letter eight. So they kind of bond over that and get closer. And yeah, it's a little rushed at the end if I had to nitpick it, you know, how they it all plays out but it was really cute I, did, I really liked it so yeah another little just dose of cuteness and lastly one that I had already read online and talked about a while ago in my releases that I was really excited that were coming out this year <laughs> speaking of which I still have not received my pre-order of Scarlet Secret Tokyo Pop I ordered directly from them it says my shipments being prepared but we're not gonna speak on it. Anyway, I didn't get that one, but I did get May's release of Only the Stars Know. So this is a BL standalone that I read online. It's just, it's really cute. There is a, a, a kind of non-consensual kiss that starts things off and if that's completely something you would wanna steer clear from. But otherwise, it's just a really solid, cute story of two guys that end up meeting and it, you know, changes his life around and yeah so again simple cute effective <laughs> all right last category let's speed run through the series i finished starting with one i am not sure if i finished <laughs> i am pretty sure that this is the last volume of love nest second but i don't know and I should have looked it up before, but instead I just was like, and I'll just make a disclaimer in the video. So this is my disclaimer. I'm not sure. There could be a third. There could be like a Love Nest third volume one. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I, I think this is the conclusion of Love Nest second anyway, which follows Love Nest. Don't get confused. It is confusing. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, just more of these cute boys. Again, this is the same mangaka as Engage, the first volume of the BL I got. So yeah, I like these boys and um, yeah, <laughs> not much else to say. The last BL that I do know, I I'm actually, well, I'll just say I'm more sure that this one's complete. It felt very complete because I actually did read it. And that is The Black Cat and the Vampire volume two. Also not going to talk much about this series other than I did enjoy it because it might be cropping up again for a future video as well. And another friend actually gifted me the last two volumes I needed in a particular series for my birthday, Nana. So I was just missing two odd volumes <laughs> and they just hilariously happened to be volume 12 and volume 21. So I have now, thanks to her, completed the incomplete series that is Nana. <laughs> she mentioned doing a buddy reread of it um, since we both read it. <laughs> I want to. I also don't want my heart to be ripped out again. God dang it, this series sucks. <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah. All right. Moving back to the newer releases that came out that finished 
series that I got to pick out for my birthday shopping spree. And that is volume two of She's My Night. Volume one came out in like end of December, early January. I don't know. I got it in early January. And the second volume's the last one. I didn't realize it was just a short duology. But um, yeah, I, I still really think it's a charming little rom-com role reversal where she's the, the princely knight character and he's the damsel in distress character and it's just cute it's cute and simple um because it's only two volumes like i can't say like it's it's amazing you should pick it up but if you just want a nice cute time and a, a longer running series that finally completed to the abandoned sacred beasts complete at 15 volumes so I read a chunk of it. I also watched the anime. I really liked the the series. So I hope this year to actually go back, start it over again, and read it all the way through. But it's it's in a long line of series I want to do that. So we'll see which ones I actually get to. But yeah, this is a nice, like, more intense action fantasy type story um, with a lot of, like, themes of, like, war and who who are the monsters kind of beasts of society, if we think of it that way, more abstract as literally um, they are hunting the immortal sacred beasts, people who got turned into superhuman beast thing, yeah. People suck, let's just say that. <laughs> but anyway, I'm excited to see how it ends and hopefully I really do like it because this the first season just had like a, you know, arbitrary end and it, it was not, it did not follow the whole story. So yeah. And lastly, one that I never, I didn't know if it was ever gonna finish to be honest, to be completely honest with you. <laughs> it's one of those ones that I felt like was on hiatus for a long while. But we finally have the conclusion to Immortal Hounds, Volume 7. So yeah, I read the first one a while ago and I liked the premise. Again, very action-packed, kind of bloody gory. It's a interesting premise. It had to do with immortality and disease that makes you not immortal anymore. So anyway, the point is, it was an interesting premise, very action-packed, very bloody though. So I will give you that disclaimer. It is uh, only rated 16 plus though. So. <sighs> so yeah, another one and this one's shorter. So I'm really hoping to restart and tackle this one as well. But yeah, that'll do it. This has been another haul video with you all and I am so thankful that you watched. I haven't put this spiel out in a little while. If you haven't subscribed yet, please, please do. And yeah, if you like the video, please do hit the thumbs up button and comment below what you've read from my pickups, what you'd like to pick up or what you haven't read yet that you'd like to read from my May haul. And just like anything else you've been reading, I can't yeah, just drop it all below. Always interesting to see what you all are reading. And tell me if you've read Whoever Steals This Book and if you liked it because I'm so curious. Or what book that you read recently that you were super excited about and thought would be perfect for you. And it just didn't end up being that because yeah, that's always interesting too not just the books you loved but the books that you were disappointed in um, and yeah that'll do it hope you all have a happy pride i can't believe it's june already but yeah until next time bye